Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device, an iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator, an iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. The reveal of the original iPhone at Macworld 2007 has already gone down in history as one of the greatest product announcements of all time. And it's used as an example to teach Intel property strategy, marketing, and public speaking in classes at universities all around the world. And look, the fruit of the first iPhone's existence are obvious, and even if you hate Apple, you have to give them credit for forming the principles of what the smartphone has become. Look no further than the smartphones that existed before the iPhone and the smartphones that existed after the iPhone. Look no further than the 2007 Android prototype contrasted to the HTC Dream on which Android debuted nearly two years after the announcement of the original iPhone. But the 2007 iPhone wasn't technically Apple's first phone announcement. There's one more thing about iTunes that we're announcing today. You've probably heard about this. Uh, today, we are introducing the iTunes phone. Weird, right? Well, not really. The iTunes phone became known as the Rocker. Clever name, clever name. And Steve Jobs announced the Rocker at a time when the iPod made up about 45% of Apple's revenue. For a company that just a few years prior had been on the verge of bankruptcy, the iPod was Apple's much needed saving grace, and its market dominance was pretty irrefutable. But look, Apple knew that this market segment that they had triumphed was not long for the world, as multi-purpose devices from companies like RIM, that's Blackberry for you youngins, uh, Palm, and others began integrating competent music playback capabilities. Not to mention that they had a bevy of other features that the single-purpose iPod simply couldn't match. So Apple began working on its own multi-purpose device in the summer of 2004. You may remember this little clip from the 2007 iPhone reveal. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. Now, what's truly funny about this is that Apple had indeed designed and tested a number of cellular capable iPods, click wheel and all, as early as summer 2004. But rather than expand on Tony Fidel's iPod team, Jobs decided to work with Scott Forstall's Macintosh team in shrinking down Mac OS X to a touchscreen based smartphone. And thanks to the 2012 Apple versus Samsung trial, we ended up seeing nearly 40 different completed industrial templates of what Apple had considered for the original iPhone. They're pretty interesting. I'll link them below. But look, it's 2005, and the iPhone is still at least a couple years away from a public unveiling. So what is Apple to do to make sure that the iPod functionality isn't replaced by newer phones? That's obvious. They partner with one of the biggest names in phones, of course. Well, actually, it isn't really an of course, and it really isn't all that obvious, as it was very unjobsian of Apple to partner with other companies. But Motorola was absolutely killing it in the mid-2000s with hits like the Razor, of which Jobs was famously a fan. And so the partnership began. And as quickly as it was born, it, it died. This hopeful partnership ended in ruins despite a massive marketing campaign with dozens of famous artists endorsing the device. So why? Well, I, I bought one to test it out. And boy, uh, I get it now. This thing sucks. <laughs> I, but it's a Motorola, and it's from the mid-2000s. Try the... 
Suck it, iPhone. So here's the new iPhone, whatever. Let's talk. Oh no! <laughs> Shiz! Uh, that broke super badly. I really wish I had my old Motorola Razr, which was my first phone ever, by the way, to compare to this thing because they don't even look like they're from the same decade. And yet the Razr was 18 months older than the Rocker. The design of the Rocker looks <laughs> pretty bad. It was a rebranded low-end candy bar phone that Motorola had already been selling for about two years without music functionality. It feels cheap and plasticky in general. The T9 keyboard is extremely wobbly, and the display is pretty dismal and small, even for the era in which this was born. The 0.3 megapixel VGA camera, which wasn't that unusual, produced some of the worst digital images I think I've ever seen, and that's comparing it to other phones on the market at the time. And the software was, <laughs> it's bad. And I'm not even really talking about Motorola software, as that was pretty similar to the software that came on all Motorola phones of the time. No, I'm talking about iTunes, or so it was called. When you hit the dedicated iTunes button on the front of the phone, a very familiar UI comes up. It looks like an iPod, not iTunes. And similar to an iPod, you couldn't purchase or download or manage songs on the device itself. So that's definitely closer to an iPod than iTunes. But boy, it, it sure isn't an iPod either. Music was stored on a micro SD card that hit itself along with the full size SIM card, uh, both of which were underneath the removable battery at the back of the device. Now, most variants of the phone shipped with a 512 megabyte micro SD card included with support for up to a one gigabyte card but the storage capacity was nearly irrelevant because the device had a software limited 100 song cap. And while I couldn't find definitive proof, it seems that certain regions outside the US may have even had a lower 50 song cap. Now the reasons for doing this seem pretty obvious to me, although stupid. Apple didn't want people buying the rocker over an iPod. So the song cap would entice those who didn't have an iPod to go out and get the real thing and the rocker would act as an iPod on the go for people that already owned one, but didn't have their full size music player on hand. But the convenience of the iPod software decreases significantly with such a limited library size. The four way toggle was vastly inferior to the scroll wheel, making navigating the UI a pretty poor experience. Although you could use these little side buttons, still bad. And syncing songs to iTunes was painful because the phone only supported USB 1.0, making it slower than all of the competing iPods at transferring music. At least you never had to transfer more than 100 songs, or 50 if you're in Europe. Now the DAC and headphone amp inside is a lot worse than iPods of the era. It was also a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack requiring a dongle or a custom pair of headphones. And it just sounds pretty poor, even on easy to drive in-ear monitors. And given that this thing was announced on the same day as the iPod Nano, which went on to be one of the best selling iPods of all time, this thing was just doomed from the start. The Nano at the time was impossibly small, inexpensive, and competent, none of which could be said about the rocker. Jobs himself even had some trouble with the software during the demo, and he was less than pleased. Yeah, I'll talk to you later, thanks, bye. So I go there and I just resume my music right back to where it was. Well, I was supposed to resume my music right back to where it was. Steve's face says it all, and the relationship soured uh, pretty quickly. Motorola blamed Apple, Apple blamed Motorola, and Apple even went so far as to remove support for the rocker after iTunes 7, just one full version later. So I actually needed to pull out my old PowerBook G4 running Tiger to set this thing up. That's a stark contrast from the iPod. Every iPod ever made remains supported in the latest version of iTunes. And later this fall, when macOS Catalina comes and iTunes gets the axe, iPods will still be supported from within the macOS Finder. 
uh, including the iPod Mini, which I unboxed with Austin Evans. And you should definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. So the rocker was just a weird little hiccup in Apple's otherwise excellent track record during the first decade of the new millennium or so. And look, I'm no expert, but I think they made it out okay. Apple, that is. Uh, Motorola, well, goodbye Moto. And goodbye to you. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay snazzy.